has turned out. It has been surreal, a little bit numbing. I, I still, I still feel like I'm in a little bit of a state of shock about this whole thing. I just really thought in my deep in my bones that this was not going to happen. At least not this year. Thought at least had another year before this would happen. But uh, just leaving Chick Fil A, meet, met up with some of my friends, had a chance to kind of talk about this whole situation and share some thoughts with my friends, Mike Lorraine, '80s Broncos fan, which is nuts because that's the freaking team that he Russell Wilson ended up going to. Uh, my other friends, Rob and Jim, what's up, you guys? Um, so, you know, I didn't even, I kind of stopped watching, listening to anything because I was just sort of sick of it. And uh, then I saw some stuff coming across, the uh, more text messages from friends. Yeah, Bobby Wagner, I can't believe Bobby's gone. I knew if you watched my video earlier, of course, Bobby Wagner was going to be gone. I mean, as soon as, as soon as Russell Wilson was traded, you knew all the free agents were going to be gone. It's just Bobby Wagner would be the first one to go. Why would you dump your um, franchise quarterback and then keep your most expensive defensive player who was on the tail end of his career with a major cap hit? No. I knew I knew, I knew Bobby would be gone, so I wasn't shocked at all uh, about that. I expected it to happen. And, and it was a slim chance anyway, even if he was going to stay. Dwayne Brown, gone. Quandre Diggs, gone. Um, DJ Reed, gone. Who else? I mean, those are just the main things. Maybe they'll, maybe they'll even trade Jamal Adams. <laughs> I mean, it makes no sense now. Why, why would you even try to find a way to keep him for the future? You know, with everything that they got tied up with him, it makes no sense now. But they're they're already, they're already kind of stuck with him, and I don't even know what you can trade for him because last year was horrible the way that they used him. I I, I put I don't know who I'm 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 angry about this mostly because I I think I spent so much time defending and arguing that he wasn't going to be traded that I started buying into everything I was telling her, but I, I kind of got blind to my own, ex, you know, accepting the possibility that he might actually get traded. And um, obviously that finally happened. And um, I, I, a lot of it is, I should know better, but like I, I said earlier, I'm, I'm done with press conferences. I will not listen to another press conference. I don't care if it's the new person who's being hired, the new coach, the new quarterback. It's all crap. It's all lies anyway. They're not going to tell you what you, what they're really thinking. And by the way, Ancient Hawk 48, thank you for that. I don't know if you already talked about it, but the Broncos are coming to Seattle this season. Oh, yeah. Talked about it at nauseum earlier. That yes, Russell Wilson will be coming to Lumen Field with his new team and his new uniform to slay the crap out of our rebuilding Seahawks team. We will get our butts kicked when Russell Wilson comes back to town just to add insult to injury. And I'm sure when he comes back, we'll have a beautiful tribute to him on the video. And people will, I expect, will. 95% of people will cheer for him and I will, I'm sure by that time, be over this maybe and I will cheer for him and uh, a few, 5% of the jerks out there will boo him. I've never wanted to boo a player, so that's not my style. Um, but going back to my question, or going on, you know, so press conferences, they're really a colossal waste of time. The only time a press conference makes any sense is after a win because you can just talk about all the great things that just happened. Oh yeah, I want to thank my coaches did a great job and my, my, my offensive line was great, the defense was great and everything's great. But it's anything else, the press conference is pointless. Think about it. If you lose a game and you got to go stand at the podium and ask questions about why you lost, you really going to be honest about why you think you lost? Hell no. Because what are you going to do? Ah, the coach really, that was a stupid play by the coach, wasn't it? 
why did he call a run on that play? I would have done it. But uh, he's a coach, so I got to do what he says. No, they're not going to say that. We're going to do, yeah, I got sacked, but man, Dwayne Brown really blew that block. And if he just would have blocked this guy and did his job, I would have thrown a touchdown pass because it was wide open. But Dwayne missed his block. That's what he's going to really want to say, but he's not going to say it. So what are they going to say? Oh, well, you know, I probably could have played better. And, uh, you know, they, kudos to the credit to the team, you know, for, uh, for playing a great game out there. And uh, we just didn't play a great We just got to go back and we've got to regroup and try to figure out what, everything. Everybody says that. What do you expect? So why do we bother listening to these press conferences when we're just going to hear the same old recycled, regurgitated crap that means nothing because no one's any, any going to tell you anything that's worth anything anyway. So then there's the press conference that is the one that talks about, hey, is Russell Wilson going to be traded? Are you guys shopping him around? No, we're, we're not shopping the poor. He's here. He's, he's our quarterback. He's here to stay. John Schneider, uh, if, if you're not shopping the quarterback, why are you taking phone calls, entertaining deals and calls? Lost the connection there. I just got this new phone. I'm, I'm just kind of in a pissed off mood about everything anyway. I got this new phone. It's, it's iPhone 13, top of the line. G... Um, 5G, and I'm still freaking getting dropouts in the middle of the live stream. What the hell? What's the point? What's the point of upgrade and 5G? What's the point of 5G if I still lose connection in the middle of the city? Everything's annoying right now. Anyway, so I'm in the middle of my tirade, and then Verizon cuts out. So what's the point in a press conference about the future of your player when you can't be honest because if you're wheeling and dealing you're not going to answer the real question are you shopping your quarterback you're not going to say oh yeah in fact we are we're, we're working on a deal with denver and i'm hoping we get a lot of good trades for him so they're not going to tell you the truth and so if you can't tell the truth you're going to have to lie about it and so if you're going to lie, you got to come up with a creative, creative lie that later on when you ask, have to be asked later about, well, what happened, coach? What happened, John Schneider? Because you said you weren't going to shot the quarterback. What happened? Well, backpedal, 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 some kind of play on words. Don't really ask the question, but just redirect and say something else that sounds like you're covering it. And it's the game. I get it. And I, I, I allowed myself to be deceived by the words of Russell Wilson and Pete Carroll and John Schneider to making me think that these guys were, that they were gonna be staying. They were all lying about it. They all knew. They all knew that it was gonna happen and they told us something else anyway. So, so I'm, I'm done with press conferences. I won't listen to another one again. I might, I say that, but I might, I might listen to the one where they will have to backpedal and try to explain themselves, just so I can see how thick the BS goes and how much they're gonna try to get creative. Maybe I can learn a few things about how to lie well or cover your lie after you're done getting caught in the lie. Here's, here's how you get out of a lie and still sound good doing it. But my point is, is like, what's the point then? Why even have press conferences? You know, the media will eat all this up, but they'll write what they want. The people like myself, fans will read this and they'll buy it or they'll say, no, nah, they're lying. And then in the end, it, it's, it's all, it's all, it's all false. It's all fake anyway. So, you know, why waste the time? Marshawn Lynch knew what he was talking about. I'm just here so I won't get fined. That might be a better answer next time. So. John Schneider, are you shopping the quarterback? Sorry, I'm just here so I won't get fined. <laughs> so I let myself get too caught up, you know, in the emotion of the, of hoping things would go the way I wanted them to. And that was the problem. I let myself get vulnerable to it. It's hard, right? Because if you're a fan, Part of being a fan is you get passionate about it. How can you be a, a fan and do all these things and spend all this money and, and get into 
caring about a team and wanting the best for the team and hoping that they win and that they get these things and that the players you get attached to, especially when they've been here for 10 years, thinking that they want to be here too, that they're in it for the long haul and that they, they're doing it for us, for the fans. They're not doing it for the fans. I, I really think they could give a crap about us. In the end, it's a business. In the end, it's about their own personal legacy. In the end, it's their own wins. Wherever they can go to get a win, they're a fan of the moment. They're a, they, they are they're loyal to whatever works for them at the time. And maybe shout for a while that was that looked like that was it, but at something at some point something turned for somebody. And that's where I go, who should I be mad at? Should I be mad at the Seahawks? Or should I be mad at Russell Wilson? Or should I be mad at both of them? Or should I be mad at all? Maybe I shouldn't be mad. I'm mad. <laughs> I'm not, it's not going the way I'd hoped or I thought it would go. And I think, I know there's a lot of people, my friends include, say, this is a good thing. This is probably the best thing because now you'll have draft picks, you'll have all this money, you can really build a team. The kind of team that you can build for the future. It wasn't the future. Russell Wilson's best days were over. Ask the Jets, who have been sucking for years, who have had multiple first round picks and high draft picks, plenty of cash. How are they doing? There's no guarantee that you're going to rise back to the top just because you got multiple draft picks and even some first high first rounders, which is nice to have that. There's no guarantee. We've, we've been horrible at drafting the last few years and we've wasted some first round picks. So the Rams proved you don't even have to have draft picks. You can win a Super Bowl without draft picks. Just go in on buy the best team that you can. Aaron Rodgers, they just went in all in. Biggest contract ever. They're all in on Aaron Rodgers. Well, we're not, we're not in that game. We're in the seller's market right now. We're dumping all the big contracts. You just watch, watch each domino fall. Russell was the first one. Bobby's the next one. Dwayne Brown will be next. Like I said, DJ Reed will be off the table. Quandre Diggs will be off the table. We're going to roll with the young guys. Trey Brown, which I like him. I like him. But this is no Super Bowl team. They're, they're, we will not be a Super Bowl team for a while. Unless the Seahawks have some ace up their sleeve, like they got some plan, they know something about Deshaun Watson, that they know he's going to get off this case, and, and some swift secret move that won't be mentioned out at press conferences, that he's gonna somehow end up with the Seahawks and we're gonna have a quarterback who might be just as good as Russell Wilson. I don't know, he's pretty good. He's one of the few guys I actually get excited about that's out there that I think has that potential to be just as good where you don't, don't miss a beat. But he's got so much to work out through right now, the grand jury and all his legal troubles and all that stuff. <clears throat> the, the quarterback of the future is not in this draft class. Just forget about that. Will it be in next year's draft class? We will certainly have the picks next year. And we'll have the picks this year, but we can turn picks into more picks for next year. I, I, I really think my short-term prediction is that this year we will last place. Last place in the NFC West. We will have one of the worst records we've seen since before Pete Carroll. When, when Mike Holmgren left the Seahawks in 2008, and then we had, uh, what's his face, 2009, uh, you know what I mean, the one year, one hit wonder, we went four and 12, five and 11. Uh, uh, Mora, Jim Mora. Uh, we're looking at a season like that, guys. And I dare you to convince me otherwise that we're gonna have a good year this year. I like, the, I like how the Seahawks, announced the raise in season ticket prices 4% or so yesterday. 
<laughs> then they conveniently announced the trade of Russell Wilson today. Now, one could argue and say, well, you know, and we were talking about it this evening, my friends, that maybe Russell Wilson wasn't going to get traded unless, if you remember, Aaron Rodgers was going to go to the Broncos for a while. Remember that? It looked like the Broncos were a possible trade partner uh, for Aaron Rodgers, a possible landing place there. Because I think when the offensive coordinator or something went over there. And, of course, when once Aaron Rodgers signed the mega deal, making him a $200 million quarterback, and that Denver was not going to get him, Denver was looking for a quarterback, clearly. I think it was Aaron Rodgers' first Russell Wilson backup plan. And Seattle probably already knew this, but they didn't know where Aaron Rodgers stood. So once Aaron Rodgers said, oh, I'm staying with the Packers, well, now the Broncos were back into buy-in mode again. Well, we're not getting Aaron. Let's get the next best thing. Let's get Russell. Let's pull the trigger on that. So it's possible that this deal wasn't going to happen until that happened. Because isn't that wild that right after Aaron Rodgers signs his deal, not more than like three hours later, the trade was announced that he's going to uh, that Russell Wilson is going to the Broncos. So, yeah, it's possible that this was not set weeks ago, but I'm sure that the groundwork for this to happen uh, with the content, you know, with the possibility, the consideration of whatever happens with, with uh, Aaron Rodgers was going to be the triggering point for me. But that's it. I, we no longer, other than Pete Carroll and John Schneider, everybody from the Super Bowl era is gone from the Seattle Seahawks. And a Super Bowl, a Super Bowl aspirations in the near future are gone too. At least for next year. Now it's possible that, you know, whatever they do at quarterback the following season, or if some, like I said, some, some clever move bringing somebody in here might change that. But I'm saying it now, we are officially blowing this whole thing up. It is rebuild mode, no more expensive free agents. We are running with the rookies. Big question will be, what will they do with the guy Metcalf, Tyler Lockett? Because these guys are great receivers. One's in his prime. The other one is about to be in his first year outside of his rookie deal. Do you keep him? Do you, do you, is he part of the future? Is DK Matt part of the future? Will DK want to be here with a no Russell Wilson? Is he going to run with Drew Locke? Is Drew Locke going to be our quarterback next year? Is, is he a stopgap guy for our next year? Well, maybe, maybe the big plan is, hey, let's just suck next year. Let's go for the number one, number two pick next year. Let's just play the Indy card, suck for luck card. We're going to just tank this season. And you don't do it by intentionally losing. No, you don't make it that obvious. You can't, can't play that game. You strip yourself of all your great players and all the players that would give you a chance to actually have a winning season. All those free agents that give you a chance to win, the Carlos Dunlaps of the world and the, uh, the Al Woods. I think all these guys not coming back. And so you run with all the young guys, all the guys who are still works in progress. So you look like you're trying with all the guys who are no longer the seasoned vets, the proven vets, and you let them develop, knowing that they can develop at the expense of winning games. And you're okay with that because losing is actually good for the, the long-term future. It's actually good to lose now because we will be in a much better position in 2023. We haven't been in this position in over 12, 13 years. Get used to it. For all you guys who jumped on the bandwagon back in 2013, who don't know what it's like to have a sucky team, well, welcome to the party. Because I've seen some bad Seahawks teams over the years. I'm an old dude compared to a lot of you guys out there. I was around during the 70s, mostly watching games on, on TV. I watched the 80s and went to a few games in the 80s. Mostly not good. A couple of playoff appearances, but a lot of bad years. 90s, mostly. Pretty much all crap until about 1990. Nine had to wait to the end of the two of the 1990 season before anything decent happened. 
We had a we had a Super Bowl, we had a playoff appearance in 1988, I think, against the Bengals. I think um, when uh, when we had um, a uh, Super Bowl appearance, oh, a Super Bowl, a playoff appearance, and then 90 is just terrible, 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 terrible. And then Hulbergen came in 99, and that was when we started finally getting some decent, you know, sniffing playoff appearances. And it wasn't a lot. I mean, the 99 we made it, lost to in the last home game in the Kingdom. 2000, it's not good. 2001, not good. 2002, not good. 2003, lost in the wild card against the Packers. 2004, lost to the, to the Rams of St. Louis. And finally, 2005, we broke through. So, I hate, to, I hate to sound like a Debbie Downer, but I'm Debbie Downer today. So, um, for those of you who feel like it's going to be an automatic thing that because if you have cash and draft picks, you will make a good team. Just try to remember in all the years, and the Seahawks are coming up on their 50th year in existence. How many true franchise quarterbacks have we had since the Seahawks have been in existence? Dave Craig, because he took us to multiple playoff games in the early 80s. Pretty much fast forward to 2000 and, what was it, one or 2000, whatever it was, when we finally got Matt Hasselbeck. So we had to wait about 15 years for that. Then we had a couple years off, uh, about a year off, and then we got Russell Wilson. So we've had three franchise quarterbacks in our almost 50 year existence. Russell was 10 years part of that. Uh, Matt Hasselbeck, oh, about 10 years of that, because he came in about 90. Um, or sorry, 2000, and then he, he was done in 2010. So 10 years there. Dave Craig, almost about the same amount of time, maybe a little bit less success. So, and as we know, in this, in this era that we're in now, to get a, to get a franchise quarterback, because you gotta have a franchise quarterback, right? And we got the Bengals. Look how long the Bengals had to go before they finally got, you know, the guy that looks pretty good almost won the Super Bowl. Um, the Rams, they didn't. They hadn't won a Super Bowl since 1999, or was it 2000? Whatever that, that year that they won the Super Bowl. They wait 22, 21 years, finally get theirs. We thought we were going to have multiples. I thought we'd have multiples. We said went back to back, and we should have three within the last 10 years. But now we are starting over from scratch. We're so um, get ready for a fun ride ahead, folks. For those of you who've only known playoff football with the exception of a couple seasons the last 10 years. Get ready, strap in for a bumpy ride. Strap in for a bumpy ride, because uh, it's going to be rough. We're going to find out who the real fans are. Not the fair weather ones who kind of got spoiled over the years and who know nothing else before Russell Wilson. I, mean, I could be wrong. This thing could turn around quick if you get lucky again. If we get a lucky 2012 draft where you just hit on all these guys that you draft but I'm kind of buying to that theory that the reason why we drafted so well in 2012 was that Pete Carroll was still fresh out of the collegiate system and was well entrenched in knowing what the good talent was that was coming up so when they did all those transactions he knew he was kind of in with the whole scene and was well connected to to all the talent that was coming up uh, in the next few years and it worked out perfectly he ain't been in that system. He hasn't been in that system in a long time. And our draft productivity has gone down. We had one, 
We're like the M. Night Shyamalan of drafting, team drafting. You have one great sixth sense in the first year or so, and then it's just been kind of a bunch of uh, okays since. But we will be in a place that we haven't been in yet where we'll actually have a high draft pick because that's when what happens when you have winning seasons every year. You don't get to draft up in the top where you get the really top echelon talent. So we will have the ability to do that in number nine this year and then next year with the other first round pick. And I'm still not really that. I'm, I'm really, I'm, besides the shock of losing Russell Wilson, I still don't like what we ended up getting in return. I mean, look at players. We have three players. We're talking about your franchise quarterback of the past 10 years. The When you expect if a trade was going to happen, that you were just going to get everything in the kitchen sink. Something that you would really get excited about. Get Drew Locke, who's average, below average quarterback at best. Average at best. Really more below average. 25 to 20 touchdown to interception ratio. <laughs> Terrible. That's Jameis Winston style right there. Uh, whatever the dude's name was the pass rusher. Six sacks last year. Kind of like a Jaron Reed on an average year. There's a bunny running across the street. Um, now, if it was uh, Von Miller, I'd be a little bit more excited. But it's not Von Miller. And then Noah Fant. Who's a pretty good tight end, was a first round pick, but. We haven't been very good at using, utilizing tight ends anyway. So that's the personnel that we got for our franchise quarterback, all pro Super Bowl winning quarterback. A couple first round picks, a couple second round picks, blah, blah, blah. I think we got screwed. I get, you know, go past the fact that the quarterback is is gone. You know, the, the, the deal we got, the real, the deal we got dealt was. I don't think they got their money's worth. Denver definitely got the better end of the deal in this thing. So, as I said in my title, who am I? Who should I be more mad at? I guess, and for those of you who are maybe grappling and trying to make sense of the emotions of what all this meant. Clearly this has been in the works. And for those of who've been saying, yeah, Russell Wilson's gone. Obviously you guys were right. Or maybe you're just lucky that you guessed right. Um, you know, I guess the, if you're trying to direct your anger at who's to blame, well, you only have two choices. You're either mad at the Seahawks if you believe the Seahawks if you were one of those people who didn't want Russell Wilson to go, you're either mad at the Seahawks because they're the ones who decided we don't want you anymore, Russ, we're getting rid of you. Or you are, you believe that Russell Wilson wanted out and said to the, went to the management and said, I'm sorry guys, but I just don't see a future here with Seattle. I need to go. I'm done. So, um, then you'd be upset with Russ because he basically decided I don't want to be in Seattle anymore. So it's got to be one or the other, right? And we'll probably never really know. We'll never really know where this whole thing originated from. But if I were a betting man, which I'm not, but if I were to guess, like all of you are wondering who started this whole thing, I would, I would have to say it was probably from the Russ side. Because I just don't think it makes sense that Pete and John would have wanted to trade Russell Wilson. But I think what happened was Russ, for whatever his reasons are, whether it be personal disagreements about that, the future of the team, his wife, family considerations, whatever, that he wanted out of Seattle. And behind closed doors, he probably went to John and Pete and said, I don't see a future here. Let's not let the thing get messy. Find a trading partner. You know, I have to accept the deal. So find, talk to whichever teams. Here are the teams I'm looking at. 
that I will approve of. So you guys go talk to them and you let me know what you can get. I don't want to have to go out in public and say, I want to trade. Because of course, if Russell Wilson has to go public and say, I want to be traded, everyone's going to hate him. And he doesn't want to be hated. He, it's, his legacy is important. And of course, Seattle fans would be pissed at him if he actually went out and said the words, I want to be traded. I want to trade from Seattle. I don't want to be here anymore. Of course, people are going to be mad. So then everything else plays out. Aaron Rodgers doesn't go to Denver. Washington football team makes an offer. Russell probably says, no, nah, I don't want to play for Washington. Who knows how many other calls were fielded in this situation, but um, that was probably the final one. I, don't, I really don't think there's a whole lot of other places that made sense. But for the Seattle side, if you know that Russell Wilson doesn't want to be here, if you are going to make a move, this is the year to make a move. Because if you wait till next year, the financial hit that would have hit this year on the cap would have cost the team money. And why keep him for another year if you know he's not going to be here long term? So, Alina. Oh, she says, look at the positive side. No more talk about him being traded. Shaking my head. More upset about Bobby. Uh, you shouldn't be upset about Bobby. Because one, with his salary hit in next year and the stage that he's at in his career, it was going to be tough to figure out how he could have brought him back anyway. But you add to this deal. When once the Russell thing went down, that pretty much spelled the entire situation for everybody. And like I said, I expect all those free agent talks that we had about you know everybody from Dwayne Brown and all those names I mentioned earlier, uh, DJ Reed, Quandre Diggs, Again, more lies <laughs> because they have to. We plan to. Who do you, what, what are you guys going to do about those free agents? Oh, yeah, we want to bring everybody back. Run them all back. We want to bring Dwayne Brown back. We want to bring Quandre Diggs back. We want DJ Reed back. We want uh, Al Woods back. We want the whole band back. Knowing that, how are you going to do that? How are you going to do that? Secular monk says Fire Pete. Well, start sending emails to. Uh, uh, Jody Allen, because <laughs> she's the only one who can do it. She is the only one higher than Pete Carroll who can fire Pete Carroll. Pete Carroll can fire himself. Walk away. Um, Regina Villanueva saw me on Como Four's news. Yeah, I, I was on the news. They interviewed me earlier today talking about this. I'll post a clip of it later. Um, So, expect that. Expect that. Um, full, impl full rebuild, nuclear bomb explosion, clear everything, keep the young guys. Expect to just start building everything up from the ground level, which that's kind of what you do, right? You're, you're, either, you're either the Rams and the Packers going all in, paying lots of money, or you are starting over from the ground up, if you, especially if you don't have your franchise quarterback. Unless they have, again, some secret plan in their back pocket of bringing a big quarterback here. Um, it's it's kind of what you have to do. So, Bully McGuire, is it confirmed Russ hasn't spoke? It's confirmed. It's confirmed and again I think it's smart that they don't have a press conference right now <laughs> what good would it do I don't even know if he's going to have an exit press conference I don't know how these things work it's been a long time since a player leave maybe his next press conference won't be until he goes to to Denver and starts you know being introduced there as a the new quarterback he may not even have an exit press conference here I wouldn't what good will it do you have nothing except to have people ask you a million questions about why why are you leaving? Why didn't you say anything about this before? And because they can't say anything about it. Whatever the answer they're going to tell you is going to be bull crap anyway. So don't even bother asking it. Alina Dahl says, also the Rams, Cards, and Niners won't know what to do as they were so used to Russ. We might just win. Uh, the Rams are going to be good again. There's some rumor out there that Brady 
might come out of retirement and play for the Niners. Niners are a good team. They're a quarterback away from making a Super Bowl. And they will still be good. Now, again, the Niners had to suck for a while to get to where they're this good. So we're kind of going through that post-Colin Kaepernick 49ers time. Remember that time when we were just beating the crap out of the Niners year in, year out from about 2014 through 2018, right? And then during that time when I'm like, oh, I miss the rivalries when, when the 49ers were actually good. Well, we get to be in that now for a while. We, we are going to be the team that is uh, not good for a while. There won't be any rivalries for Seattle for a little while. Might be close to the Cardinals. The Cardinals, I don't know, they're kind of in a mess too. But they might still have their franchise quarterback, depending on if you believe in Kyler Murray or not. So we'll see. The, Niners are, the Rams are going to be the, the bad boys on the block. The 49ers, if they get a quarterback, could be in contention still. Cardinals, depends. They could splinter and go way off the other the direction. <clears throat> It's gonna be fun. How does five and thirteen? No, five and twelve. Five and twelve. Five and twelve. How's that sound? Yeah. That'll be good times. Kind of got a taste of it last year. I mean, seven to ten, not much different from five and twelve. <clears throat> but expect to see a lot of empty seats. Who knows? Maybe they'll won't raise ticket prices next year if we have a really sucky season. Maybe that'll be the flip side to it. It makes the draft a lot more interesting now. Wow, another bunny. There's like bunnies everywhere, man. These things are just popping up everywhere. More food for the coyotes. Take Jimmy G. <laughs> Sorry, he's the reason the 49ers didn't win. That would be like taking Blair Walsh after he blew a kick that could have won them a playoff win and then take it away. We did do that. Um, yeah, I don't know. Franchise quarterbacks don't grow on trees. You really only get them one of two ways. You make a trade for one and spend a lot of money and assets, or you suck for a while, build up a great team and then suck enough so that you can get a high draft pick and get one in a draft or you go for the lottery the russell wilson lottery which is you can't strategize for the russell wilson one we lucked out on that one because teams passed them up two rounds in a row uh russell wilson was a, a lucky find and you will not find franchise quarterbacks in the third round that is not going to happen on a regular basis so don't think you, you can get one in the same way it's not going to happen russell wilson was a special scenario so that really is our best situation here is just continue to draft well with these pack picks that we're going to have and stink for a couple years so that we can get draft high with a lot of other higher draft picks as well. So it's almost kind of a necessity. We almost have to kind of stink for the next couple of years. That way we can be on the road to being great again in 2025 or 24, maybe. Uh, just in time for Pete Carroll to uh, either retire or maybe he extends it longer and he'll become really the, really the oldest coach in the uh, Seahawks in, in NFL history. Hmm. I'd like to be wrong. I'd, like, I'd love to be proven wrong that we're going to turn this around suddenly. But, you know, the, the, the Colts is the only team I can think of was where they went from having a great quarterback in Peyton Manning and only having one bad year and then being so lucky that they went from great team with a good team with great quarterback. He goes suck for just one year, and then get the number one draft pick. Of course, Andrew Luck never worked out long term because he retired early and all that. So even that didn't work out. But in terms of getting a franchise quarterback, 
that was really the, only, the one of the few express route options where you didn't have to be the Cincinnati Bengals, where let's just suck for 25 years and we eventually get that quarterback. I can't wait that long. <laughs> I'm an older guy. If we have to wait that long, I'm going to be super old by the time uh, if the Seahawks have to play that game. I'm like, hey guys, what's going on? This is Norm Cam. Finally excited that we got the number one draft pick and the best quarterback class we've ever seen. I think we'll go to Super Bowl 72. I think this is our year. <laughs> My heart. Nah, I can't wait that long. So, hopefully John Schneider and Pete Carroll have some kind of uh, plans up their sleeve. But whatever plans up their sleeve that they might have had over the past 10 years has only yielded one Super Bowl win. And it hasn't really yielded much more since then. So, <sighs> It's going to be interesting. But we are, you know... All bitterness and anger and sarcasm and cynicism aside, which I'm sweet, I, I reserve the right to be really negative right now. It won't last forever. I'll be better in a few days, weeks, months. Um, but this is going to sting for a while. And it should sting if you really, well, if you're like me, unless you're of the get rid of Russell camp. And maybe you're like, good riddance, finally. What took so long? Um, <laughs> if Deshaun Watson gets done with the damn 22 court cases, maybe. That would be a pretty sweet move if it worked. Um, <laughs> like I said, just get ready. Get ready. It hurts more since he said he was going to be here until he retires. I take people on their word. Well, that you and I made the mistake of taking a press conference at their word. Like I said, after this, I've decided no more press conferences. At least no more buying into what I hear at press conferences. Maybe that's the difference. I might watch a press conference just to see how thick the BS goes and how they try to squirm their way out of explaining why what they said earlier made sense. But yeah, I, none for me, thanks. It just makes no sense to do it. it makes no sense to have them, and it makes no sense to listen to them. And, it, and I won't be reading any articles based on something that somebody said in a press conference, because they're basically writing an article based on something that has no basis of truth or reality to it. So, uh, you know, I find myself thinking, you know, this is dumb. Why are you getting emotional about this? This is football. It's just a game. Life has got way bigger things to be concerned about. So why are you even wasting this much energy and frustration over something so stupid as football? It's just a game played by millionaires, owned by millionaire billionaires. Why should I let this, you know, uh, affect me so? But still a football fan and still a Seahawks fan. And I'm not going to stop rooting for my team, even if I told myself, I'm so pissed, I'm going to stop rooting for the Seahawks. I don't think I could do it. I think I would be, I would find, I'd slowly find myself getting pulled back in because I couldn't help myself. <clears throat> so I'm not going to try to pretend like I'm going to not be a fan anymore. It's been too long. Spent most of my life rooting for this team. I've seen so much come and go. Come and go. But I will still be around. I will be here to watch the carnage, to watch the struggle, to watch the irrelevancy and the losing that I'm sure will come at least this coming year. I'm saying it now, we will be lucky to be more than five and 12 this year. And I don't even have a really a reason for it other than just a feel based on everything that's happened without even seeing who the players are gonna be next year.
Unless some quarterback lands in our lap and suddenly that changes everything. That would be the one exception. So, 5 and 12. I'm already predicting it. 5 and 12. Don't know where those five wins are coming from, but that's my over under. There, there you go. Uh, but what's nice is I'm already setting myself up. My expectations are real. I have no delusionary thoughts of making it to the Super Bowl this year. Less a playoff berth. And every win that we get will be something special. Because if you're 5-12, and 12, that means anything you get is going to be something else. And uh, I don't know. We're in the, in the, we're in the sort of lose now mentality of trying to get into the draft maybe we don't want to win maybe we really do want to watch this team not win it's hard to i never believed in that whole thing i never liked the idea of trying to lose on purpose so that uh you can just have a better draft position but if you know you're not going to make it and you're building for the future I can't believe I'm actually thinking it might be better off if we don't. <laughs> like it's a close game, like 17-14 late in the game, and we got the ball with a chance to win it with a touchdown. I might be going, just throw pick six to win. We got that number six draft pick right now. And if we win, we're gonna drop to number nine. Don't do it. We can save ourselves a draft pick. We can stay in the sixth position. But if you throw that a touchdown, we're gonna drop and then we have to trade up and waste a pick. Don't do it, just lose. We might be in that position next year. Crazy. <sighs> Man. I'm tired. <laughs> it's been a long, long draining day. So uh, with that, I'm going to wrap things up. Appreciate you guys watching this. It's so funny. My channel's been pretty, uh, pretty quiet lately. Haven't been talking much football. Views and subs have been down, and it took a Russell Wilson trade to suddenly wake things back up and get people back on here. <laughs> oh, just like my Super Bowl 49 interception, I think me at my lowest seems to get the most attention from people. Misery loves company, and people love to watch other people suffer. Isn't that the truth? Well, enjoy it, because uh, you last suffering to come. <laughs> All right, can do nothing but laugh and smile about it, because... You know, point crying. I refuse to cry. I didn't cry about it, and I'm like, gonna. At least I don't think I am. Unless I listen to some really sad music and start reminiscing about the good old days and watching exciting wins and moments with Russell Wilson. All right. I'm out of here, you guys. More to come. More axes. More other shoes to drop. More axes to fall. Uh, you just watch. Those names I mentioned earlier today, they will be disappearing from the Seahawks roster. I will be shocked if any of those free agents that we are in question are going to be back here. Just no way. Would make no sense. Bobby was the first obvious one. We'll see if I'm wrong or right. All right, y'all. But I will still say again, I'm still going to follow this team, and I will end my broadcast saying... Hawks. Bye.